leadership of the church. Uh, by the grace of God, today is not going to be the conventional preaching uh, that we're used to. We'll be talking, we'll be teaching. And before we'll be teaching, we'll be interacting together. Uh, so our focus, as we have had, is that by the grace of God, we're looking at issues that have to do with church growth. Church growth. And uh, you will get to understand, as time goes on, what church growth means and why we are concerned about church growth. About church growth. So, let's pray once again. Our Father, we come. We acknowledge you. We know that you are the head of the church. And we cannot talk about your body. Lord, without your inspiration. We need you, Almighty God, to speak to us. Teach us yourself. So that at the end of this day, all of us will have learned and glory will be returned back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so you will permit me, as I've said, uh, to do some things differently. Uh, I hope uh, our sister recording will not feel too much strain. Uh, please just bear with me. I don't want to be too far. Pastor, you permit me to come a little closer. I'm feeling I'm too far from the mind. Uh, we are teaching so that we can talk about this. Uh, I'm glad to see my brethren from the land. God bless you. Now, what we're trying to look at is to look at a little church growth from the going up and coming as we look at this. Now, the first thing I want us to have an understanding of, my brothers and sisters, is what is your understanding of the church? Church, my sister. What's your understanding of the church? We are not going to have a good force. We need someone to help us. Yes, but I think we are teaching. Yes, what's the name of the church? Church. school or in high school, 
There are times people will say, I'm in church. If you are in social service, how is the church grown? How is the church grown? Like this. So see what my brother has grown here. Can you see? So this is what? This is what we want to know that the church is. Is that not It has a cross of God. We will see like this, like this, then up the cross. If you see another one like this, I will not see precepts. What does that one mean? A mouth. Okay. Yes, my sister, thank you very much. My sister here also will drink the same thing like this. Thank you. Sister, please come. Come and come back to me. Let's, let's appreciate everyone who has done so. Question. 
I just want us to establish the context. Jesus took his disciples to a particular area and they went far. And Jesus wanted to get feedback from his disciples. And he asked them questions. In Matthew chapter 16, when you look at Matthew 16, as we read from verse 13, the Bible says, Matthew 16, I read from verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippa, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Are we there together? Now, I want us to read together. Let's get their reply. One to go, they reply. I want us to read together. Are you there? Yes. Then let's read together. One to go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wow. Now, listen as I read verse 15. But what about you? He asks, Who do you say? I am. Now, church, read verse 17. Uh, read verse 16. Want to go? Now, let's read together what Jesus now said in verse 17. Want to go? Jesus replied. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. Verse 18, want to go? And I tell you that you are Peter, and on, Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell will not overcome. Wow. Thank you, church, for good reading. Who owns the church? Who owns the church? Jesus Christ. Did you see there? This is said, what? And on this wall, I will build your church. No, please go back to the Bible. And on this wall, what? I will build my church. Mine. So this is. Who is your this? Ah, are you finished yours? It's mine. <laughs> see, that's why it's our for Jesus. Are we together, brother? We are trying to take this little by little for all of us to be together. So, one, we have seen that the church is not talking about physical building. So, if pastor and the leadership of both families in Kenya today says, brethren, we are not meeting here next Sunday, we are going to meet in the house of my brother. This was what the name of if pastor says we are meeting to my next Sunday in our pastor brothers. So what happens? Is it that the church has ceased to exist? No. Now, how many churches do we have in this house? How many believers do meet in your house? Do we have cells? Do we have a self fellowship home groups? We do not have home groups, but we'll be talking about that. I don't know if we have four or something. But as I'm looking here, there are different churches. The church that meets in the Ajala's house. Do you remember? The church that meets, uh, tell me your name again. Huh? In Steve's house. The church that meets in Jonah's house. The church that meets in that brother's house. The church that meets in that sister's house. So when two, three, four people are there, what did this all say? I am here in their midst. Hallelujah. So number two, we have to realize that the church is for Jesus. Are we together? Yes. And Jesus said, I will build my church. Now you build church on what? Why did Jesus say that? And what was Jesus talking about? I'm trying to lay the foundation for us to understand something. As we look at church growth, brethren. There are many, many things people call church growth today that is not. But I want us to understand something. Now, 
Jesus said something based on the response of Peter. Did you see that? After he asked them, you, 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 who do you say I am? Ah. <laughs> you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Why? And it's like, you got it. And based on this understanding, based on this revelation, I will build my church. Based on what church? I will find the same thing in Acts chapter 4. Let's go to Acts chapter 4. You find something in Acts 4. We'll be coming back to Acts 4 as we look at pattern there. You find something in Acts 4. I want us to understand what you find in that place as we look at what and what we're talking together. Sorry, Acts 2, not 4. Pardon me. Acts 2. Acts 2. There's something you find in the last verse, verse 47, in Acts chapter 2. Acts 2. Acts 2, 47. If you are there, can we read it together, church? Uh huh. Okay. Aha. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. The church is the assembly of all our believers. Ecclesia, the root word, is talking about assembly, the gathering, the calling out, those who have been called out, those who have been called, called out from works. The assembly, the assembly of called out people. And when you hear parliaments, you hear members of the parliament, you hear senator, the concept is taken from the concept of ecclesia, the concept of people who have been called out. For example, it is not every Kenyan who is seated in the parliament, but it is believed that every county and every constituency has representatives in the parliament. Is that what? So therefore, the people in parliament can tell you these laws we are making is for the people of Kenya. But when you come to them, there may not be more than a thousand. I don't know their number. Maybe 500, for example. I don't know their number. Maybe 300. But 300 people will tell you that this law is for the interest of about 47, 48, 50 million Kenyans. Assembly of called out people. Now, who are these called out people? Those who are what? Being saved. Have you come to church? Those who are what? Being saved. So ordinarily, please don't misunderstand me. Don't misunderstand me. Ordinarily, there should not have been anything called altar call in the church. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm not saying it's wrong. That's a little misunderstanding. I said, ordinarily, there should not have been anything called what? Altar call in the church. Why? Why? Who wants to tell me the reason? Why do you think it should not have been? Why? Thank you, my sister. Because those people are supposed to be what? People who are what? Saved. But let me ask you, is that the situation today? That is why we have it. I think my life requires a church. A pastor preached. And he asked, is that someone that wants to give his life to Christ? And I said, yes, sir. And I came out and I gave my life to Jesus. That opportunity was given to me. But I'm telling you, 
was not giving us at all. Because if the opportunity was not given to me, when it was given to me over 25 years ago, I would probably not have had that opportunity. I was seated in the church like you, and somebody gave me that opportunity, and I responded to the Lord. And I can tell you, my life has not remained the same. Amen. Amen. So that's why we give what I call in church. Because most churches today is what? It's not only. Please listen to me. It's not only those who are saved. There are many among us here who are not saved. That we look for the opportunity, the pastor will give, or somebody will give, and the person says, Yes, I want to respond to Jesus. And that person says, Yes. How do you get a church? So please, did I say it's wrong to give what I call in the church? No, Is that what I said? No. Okay. Thank you. So can we progress into my yes. Okay. Don't forget we are trying to lay foundation. And from there we begin to build little by little. Okay. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 13. Let's look at Matthew 13. As we look at some things that Jesus has said about the gospel, which happens to be the focus of the church. In Matthew chapter 13, there we have two different analogies that were used in between verse 31 and verse 33. Matthew 13, in between verse 31 to verse 33. Can we read it together? Matthew 13 from verse 31 to 33. Can we read it together? Okay, why don't you go? Hold on, hold on. It's like what? A master seed. Go ahead. Mm. 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 Wow, thank you. What's the second analogy? Once you go. Mm. Now, two analogies have been used here. One, that of a master seed. Are we together? The second one is that of what? A yeast. A yeast. Do we have anybody who has been last year before? Or you make bread? Is it the same side of yeast that is the same side of your hunger that you use? Ah, this one to make bread. Do you use the same quality, the quantity of hunger for your shabbat? Is that the same quantity you put as yeast? My sister there. I can see that you are doing it. You said no. The way it is no. It means your yeast may be small. Is that not so? Yes. But when you put it in dough, what happens to that yeast? It begins to walk. It begins to walk. And before you know it, what happens? The hunger begins to swell. Number two. Change the life 
for people. This man used to be a drunkard. That, that thing will beat him.
But look at different, different misconceptions. I don't like misconceptions by the church that the church is a weird house. You know, weird house. You are go, uh, go down. It's okay. The church is bringing forth fruits. The, church, the DNA of the church is to multiply. The DNA of the church is to grow. Now, having laid this foundation, I want to gradually begin to move towards what I'm supposed to be handling, the aspect of church growth. This aspect, we have divided it into two. And I will not handle one aspect. My wife will be handling that aspect. And that is the aspect of evangelism. 
I'm adding the aspect of the principles for you and I to know what we are talking about. And when we know what we are talking about, we now move to what are we supposed to do about it. Are we together? Okay. So, we have seen what the church is. We have seen that the church belongs to Jesus, according to Matthew chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. We have seen that the church is an assembly of called out people. We have seen that the church, Jesus used different analogies in Matthew 13, verse 31 to 33. When we see the analogy of the gospel of, of the, of the Mossad seed and the analogy of the yeast. Now, I want us to look at ask ourselves something. Bro, please come my church. The church, the church that meets in Jesus' house. This is the church that meets in Jesus' house. Bro, can you compose another church? Join them. No, no, no. How do you compose another church? Join them. Uh, let's pick one minute. The church that meets in Jesus' house. Ah? This is the church in the Gospel. Can you please come to another church? Let me have another church. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Please let me have another church. Yeah? Church, I want you to help us. Please come. We need to grow. We need to grow. The Lord is doing wonderful things. So this 
my sister. Are we together, Jack? He's looking at her life. Hmm. This is my neighbor. Five o'clock in the morning. In the morning, I in the morning. She's in her room. It's my neighbor's room. But in the immediate
Because the Bible says that not everyone that mentioned my name shall stay the head. And again, it's not by the by their fruits we shall know. So I think by myself I will look at their character. Wow. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate our brother. Let's appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Now, does anybody have one or two questions from the Bible Church? I don't think it's a, well, this is a teaching. It's not preaching. Yes, we should be thinking of something. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm going back to the church. Yes, who is thinking? Can I see someone? Oh, yes, my sister here. About the adopt They are top trees. Mm. Wow. Now, give us an example. Oh, no, give us an example. Give us an example. Okay. Uh, about the adopt tree, mm. you might find that uh, there's a chart that they say, they normally say that to you. You, you drink wine and you preach water. Mm. So you find that when they, they preach that somewhat they mm. move out of the Bible. Mm. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Let's appreciate our church. Let's appreciate our church. So adoption, the church doctrine. What do they believe? What do they preach? What do they teach? Okay? Now let's take one more before I release this book and continue. Let's take one more. Uh, no. No, no, Pastor, no. <laughs> yes, let me see someone from here. Give it to them, my sister. <laughs> Give it to one of the three and three sisters there. One of them was having box. Yes, thank you. Are they, are they shy? Someone is having box. I know, I'm not calling you here. There are no other sisters. No, 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 don't go there. Sister? Okay, someone has to be a Yes, thank you. Thank you. This is a, I'm a teacher. As a teacher in my class, there's one prayer God does not answer in my class. And that prayer is God. Who makes it for me? Who makes it for me? As you are praying, I'm calling you. Yes, yes, thank you, brother. Yes. I know that. I think we need to have something. Ah? I think we need to have something in the video. But any person, they don't look at the. How is it manifesting in their life? 
How can we see it in their life? So the first challenge I'm passing across to you, church, this morning is, is my life, my character, drawing people to church or driving people away? Do we understand? It's my life, my character. Is it drawing people to church or is it what? Or is it what? Driving people. So I want to go through this. Everybody do like this. This is what? Drawing people like this, everybody? Drawing people to Jesus or what happens? Are we in Psalm 23? Psalm 23. How many of us know the Psalm of Anne? You know it of Anne.
many Somalia there. We have Somalia, Somalia, Somalia have strength. They will help the Somalia. Okay, okay. Now let's begin. With, let's open our Bible and read it. Pastor, I wish, I wish we have three days. I mean, I wish we have three days that we can spend enough time. To handle this, but we trust God to help us as we grow little by little. Amen. Amen. Church, let's go together. The Lord Amen. is my Father. As I love Now, what do I say? 
just dress up on the Sunday morning and go somewhere, they know where to go. So as we are talking about the principle of church growth, we need to ask ourselves, how much of fellowship do I have with God? Can He draw me and use me as a pride, a channel to finish me? What are they coming to me? They are part of different, different things. They are part of different, different things. Which is not just encouraging. But brethren, as we talk of church growth, let's understand the fact that we are telling people to come for green pasture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me to still waters. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Is this person coming to get restoration? The water is not only after fed and asking. Where is the water? In the middle of chapter 17, the people of Israel at the time doubted the presence of God in their midst. And they confronted Moses. Is God among us? How can we have no water to drink? And the Lord gave instruction to Moses for what to do. And that's why he was striking the rock here. Because we've already asked the question Is the Lord among us? If he is among us, how come we have no water to drink? Be handled over uh, by my wife. So we have seen that one church growth is not only about growing in number, it's also talking about death that we are releasing. What is it that our own life is also showing? Now I want you to look at Luke chapter 5. Let's look at Luke chapter 5. Let's look at another wonderful analogy that we want to look at in Luke 5. We want to quickly look at Luke 5 and see something in Luke 5. Then we finally come to Acts chapter 2, then we gradually run off. Luke chapter 5, Luke 5, I want you to see something in Luke 5. You also have this same story in other gospel. But something happened that I want you to see. Luke 5. Are we together? Now, can we read from verse 1? Let's read from verse 1 to 5. But my focus is in between 4 to 7. My focus is from verse 4 to 7. But I want us to read from verse 1. Have you able to present it for us? Okay? In Luke chapter 5, I want us to read together from verse 1. Let's go. 1 to the church.
happen to them over night? Destruction. What did they do to try and act? Huh? They tried to fish. But what happened? Why? Why? No experience. No experience. The boat was leaking. And robbers, they are stealing all the fish. Kidnappers have kidnapped all the fish. The fish were feeling free. They were catching cold. So what happened? Okay. These men had labored. I want us to draw some principles from here. Let us imagine that this fish, let us imagine, I'm not saying it is, please don't misunderstand me. Let us assume that this fish is talking about those souls that are out there. The same nets. They didn't catch any fish. Look at verse 6. What happened to that same net? What happened to that same net? They got net breaking fish. Cash. What happened to those fish? Where were they? You were there. I'm not 
conceitos, alguém vai falar deles? É. of the apostle that we read. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, Acts 2, we read up unto verse 47. Acts 2, we read up unto verse, can you project it for us please? Acts 2, I want us to look at it from verse 43 to 47, so that we can run off and uh, the pastor can, pastor can guide us on the next phase of this. Acts 2, 43 to 47, we saw something uh, concerning an example of a church that was growing. Example of a church planted that was growing. Now, please, can you move that for me? Yes. Let's look at 43. Let's look at 43. Uh, then. Fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostle. Now, church, let's continue one to go for the four. Lord is still doing wonders and miracles. 
Please. It's not everything you see that is fake. Please. And I'm not telling you here that there are no fake. But because there is fake, does not mean there is no original. The Lord is the only blind eyes. The Lord is still raising the dead. The Lord is still raising the crippled. The Lord is still healing states for cancer. Whatever you can think of. The Lord is still giving, is still replacing whom? The Lord is still giving new kidney, new liver, new hearts. The Lord is still in miracles. So for the fact that we see faith does not mean that there is no religion. In verse 43, it says many signs and wonders were done to them. I call this the miraculous. And please listen to me very well. The miraculous doesn't have to do what is done by the pastor in. Do you understand that? And what did he say? He said, and this sign shall follow pastors. And this sign shall follow apostles. And this sign shall follow bishops. So what does the Bible say? So it means if you and I believe, the Lord can do miracles for us. Hallelujah. So brother, as we look at church groups, can we also offer ourselves to God and say, God, I offer myself to you. God bless you. You meet a couple in your place of work. When you are selling the burger by the roadside, when you are selling the roasted fish or whatever, and they say they are trusting God for the food of the womb, and you say, Let me pray for you. And you say, In the name of Jesus, answer their prayer. And they go, and they call you back after two months. So, what did you do that day for my wife? What did you do that day for my wife? Yeah, I think I pray. You know God has answered that prayer. Hallelujah. Do you think God can only show you? Do you think God can always bless you? Brethren, can we trust the Lord for the miracles? Hallelujah. Can we offer ourselves to God and say, God, I offer myself to you. Brethren, you are the one that will tell people not to come with you. <laughs> come people will say, I want to go by you. The Lord who can reduce mountains with ease. The Lord who can change people without surgery. The Lord who can change liver without opening you up. I want to look at God. The Lord who can heal cancer. Even when doctors have said, Go, oh, go and die at home. And he said, Let me pray for you. Mama. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Be healed. I'm a master God. I'm a master Brethren, we want to look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we trust God? Do yes. that are faith or not make of religion. Let us rise up this time. I want to pray for you. Sir. There are many people that can be saved. They are out there. They are out there. But they are waiting. They are waiting. They want to see what we are saying. I want you to pray. Pray to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. I want you to talk to God. God, I offer myself to you. I offer myself to you. Lord, use me. Use me. Use me. Use me. Lord, use me. Use me. I offer myself to you. Lord, use me. I offer myself to you. Lord, use me. In that place where I am serving as a teacher, in the school where I am teaching, in the place where I am selling, in the market where I am selling, in the, in the job where I am doing, 
Even that which I am asking, Lord, I offer myself to you, use me. I know what to do. I'm also a part of church growth. It's not only the responsibility of the pastor. It's not only the responsibility of the pastor. My life can draw people to you. My life can draw people to you. My life can bring people to the church. My life can bring people to the faith. My life can bring people to you. Understanding of the world. Teaching the world. Teaching the world. And manifesting the miracles. Almighty God. I want to use you. I want you to use me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. To be glory. To be honor. To be praise of your name. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, use me, Lord. Lord, use me, Lord. Lord, use me. Lord. Lord, use me. To the glory, to the honor, to the praise of your name. Lord, use me, Lord. Lord, use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. People of humanities, I like to choose between light and darkness. Even when they come to light, I like to come over to our church or to come somewhere else. We have alternatives. We have alternatives. Lord, we pray with you. Let me the Lord and the Lord will draw people. The Lord will draw people unto Himself. The Lord will draw people unto Himself. Those species that were hiding, but when they had the voice of the Lord, they came out from their hiding place. They came out from their hiding place. Lord, let me come to you. Draw people. Draw people to yourself. Draw people to your house. Guide us to men and men that are walking around there. That we may present your word to them. And that they may come to faith in Christ Jesus. And that they may grow. They may grow. They may grow. They may grow as we establish them in the world. Lord, draw me. Draw me. Give them the world. Let them hear your voice. And let them respond. To the glory and to the honor of your name. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We glorify you. Thank you for teaching us. Be now exalted our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray.